Uh, yeah, my name is Dave Sudlick. I am a offering manager for WebSphere Application Server. Uh, just a little bit about my background. Uh, for the first 28 years of my career, I was in uh, various aspects of ZOS development, so I'm a longtime mainframe guy. Uh, in around 2007, I joined WebSphere Application Server Development for ZOS. And uh, about two years ago, I thought, well, wouldn't it be fun to see how a business like IBM is run? And uh, that brought me into product management and now offering management. Um, and it's fun sometimes. Uh, so bringing WebSphere to the cloud. This is actually, I got asked to do this presentation last week, and the timing is actually perfect because for the last month or two, we've been working on our cloud entry point strategy. Uh, and you know, we have lots of offerings for the cloud that involve WebSphere application server, full profile, and Liberty profile. And I'll talk a little bit about those. Um, but really the strategy is at a, you know, this current point in time, you know, how do you take either, you know, new applications, which I know you've been talking a lot about, or your existing Java enterprise applications and get them into the cloud. And there's a number of different ways to do that. And I'll kind of talk about how that fits into it. And we actually announced this whole strategy on Friday, last Friday, and there's a website dedicated to that. So I'll have a link to that at the end. Um, I have a choice here between talking to expand 40 minutes or keeping it straight and to the point. So I'm going to try and keep it straight to the point. So if we end a little early, I hope you guys don't mind. Uh, and I'm not too proud to use speaker notes. Speaker notes. So right, technology changing the way that business works. And I, I love these numbers, so I love looking up numbers. 2.6 billion phones globally. Um, and you know that's starting to, to tail off for the more mature developed markets. But less mature markets are going to drive growth to over 6 billion phones, you know, cell phones by 2020. And that's not 6 billion flip phones. That's 6 million smartphones you know, with applications driving your business. Public cloud market will triple by 2020 to about $200 billion. Internet of Things, projected growth from about 5 billion interconnected things today to about 25 billion internet connected things by 2020. So huge growth driving all of this, right? And lots of, lots of uh, pressures on the business. There's cost pressures. There's, uh, you know, how do you handle that kind of volume? How do you develop your applications quickly uh, and get them to market quickly? Um, I, I mean, just to contrast this from you know, where I've come from in the past, uh, ZOS itself, we used to have a two-year release cycle in the, like in the late 90s, two years before a product would come out. And, and to be fair, that was OK, because customers would never take a new release more often than every two years. Uh, and now with Liberty Profile, we put new release out every quarter. Uh, and they get consumed as fast as we can put them out. So it's just, it's amazing. Uh, so you as business leaders, right, using this technology, all those things we talked about, Internet of Things, mobile and cloud, to basically, as, as a strategic, strategic lever for your business. Uh, and so what do you want to do? You want to save costs, okay? The traditional model for Web3 application server is a you know, perpetual license with, with a large upfront uh, capital expense. Uh, cloud, you, know, you benefit from this more subscription-based model, pay as you go. Uh, maybe you've got short-term projects that come and go. Maybe you just need services that are used as they're driven. Uh, so you've got lots of opportunities to save costs there. Another aspect to saving costs is um, reusing that investment that you have. So you've got a huge investment in your current uh, Java enterprise applications. You know, how do you save costs by reusing that? Speed time to market, right? Taking advantage of a lot of the things we're doing with Agile and DevOps. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about that. Uh, but getting those things to market as quickly as possible is, is obviously key. And then leveraging infrastructure for growth. So you have your existing infrastructure uh, that you want to be able to take advantage of in a cloud-like way, or maybe you want to be able to take advantage of public cloud um, using that, again, with your existing Java applications. 
we, we, our marketing team came up with this phrase, which I like, how can I code like a startup yet run in the enterprise? We had been calling it multi-speed IT, right? And so you've got, you think about your production environment, and you know, you've got uh, mission critical things running there, and you, you know, you've got to have some kind of control over that, you know, things go down, it's really bad. Yet at the same time, you're reacting as fast as possible as you can on the front end for applications trying to get them developed. So it's, it's kind of a dichotomy there that you've got to meld together. And, and uh, a lot of what we're doing with our strategy is to help you do that. Um, and again, this is you know, new applications, enterprise applications. Also refer to them as systems of engagement, systems of record. Uh, so we'll be talking about that. So this is a picture of what we have today. Um, it's kind of all over the place, uh, but what I'm going to do is kind of put it together in a way that hopefully makes sense when I'm done. And, and I mentioned multi-speed IT, right? On-prem, that is that, you know, your business critical, uh, you know, process-oriented type environment. Speed of innovation is, you know, your cloud development. Uh, so we have a number of different offerings today. We certainly still have the traditional on-premise, perpetual license, uh, web sphere application server uh, environment. You know, bring your own host, run it on your own hardware. Uh, that is obviously still alive and well. We integrate with pure application, so pure application system, pure, pure application software, and over in the cloud, pure application services. We also have uh, Liberty Build Pack and also web sphere application server on Bluemix. So there's Bluemix Local. Bluemix Public, Bluemix Dedicated. Okay, I know you've been having people talk to you a lot about those. And we also have another offering, IBM Application Server on Cloud, which differs from Bluemix in a way I'm going to talk about in a minute. Uh, and you can have IBM Application Server on Cloud in either a Bluemix or a SoftLayer environment. And IBM Application Server on Cloud is really just WebSphere Application Server or, or Liberty Profile running in that environment. So how does this all fit together? Well, you, you kind of have to ask yourself, what problem is it you're trying to solve, OK? If you want to create uh, cloud-native applications, OK, what you're going to want is instant runtimes, so Bluemix, OK? And then you can decide, do you want Bluemix local? Do you want it in the cloud? What type of uh, requirements do you have in terms of where those applications are running, OK? Now, that's... Um, that's the Cloud Foundry model, right? There are, you know, manage, there are different management uh, techniques for using that than, than maybe you're used to. If you've got an existing WebSphere application environment with your configuration and everything, and you want to be able to take advantage of those skills that you have and you know, scripts that you have that you use for configuration and administration, well, then that's a separate type of problem. And then you have to ask yourself the question, uh, is the density of the VM a concern to you? If you're looking for something that's lightweight, we have uh, Liberty Images in the Docker Hub, so you can run Liberty in Docker. Uh, if that's not as much of a concern for you, then we've got IBM Application Server on Cloud, which is a way to run your existing environments uh, in the cloud, basically unchanged. What we call lift and shift, and I'm going to be talking about that more as well. So these points here, right? Where do you want to run it? On-prem, on cloud, or a combination of the two, hybrid. How do you want to pay for it? Perpetual license, uh, subscription-based, or pay-as-you-go. And we have different uh, offerings for those. Uh, move the workloads as you need them. Mix and match. Optimize your deployments. Uh, and it's, you, know, you can move your workloads to the cloud, or you can bring some of the cloud things into your workload. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. I think I pushed the wrong button, yeah. OK, so this is, <laughs> as, as uh, Dion Newman, the former head of Z Systems Marketing said, my charts are gorpy and, uh, and guilty as charged. So I don't want you to try and read the details here. This is uh, this basically the stack. And what's interesting here are the colors, OK? And these are the offerings that we have. Here's your on-prem model. And this dark blue says fully customer managed. So when you're running on-prem, you know, you're in charge of everything. And the idea is as you move across our set of offerings 
pure application, IBM application server on cloud, and then Bluemix, more and more of that stack gets managed by you know, the platform that you're running on. Okay? So that's, I mean, I could talk to this chart for an hour, but that's the main thing that I want to make sure you got out of that. And it kind of puts those different offerings in perspective. So this is, I guess, the fundamental chart for the WebSphere cloud strategy. Uh, and this is something we've been working on, like I said, for a little while now. And we actually have uh, these, these talks with customers. They're called the Client Experience Program, CEP. And I saw a list for customers here, and some of you have participated in those in the past. Uh, and two weeks ago, we had uh, four one-hour talks about the details of this. So I'm going to talk about, you know, basically our, our cloud strategy and where we are now. Uh, but we've got a whole roadmap behind this, this, this cloud strategy and where we're going. Um, and so if you're, you've got access to those, you know, that client experience program and you can get access to those replays, I encourage you to do it. Um, because they're talking about, you know, roadmaps and stuff, it's all uh, NDA, non-disclosure type stuff, but it's available to you if you have access to it. Um, otherwise, I guess the message is, you know, keep your eyes open because we have more coming. Uh, but the three main entry points are create, enhance, and optimize. And create is about, like it says, creating new applications. Uh, and this is going to be around, you know, potentially microservices, their cloud native applications. Uh, API economy comes into play here, as does uh, refactoring your existing applications. And so we've got some ways to do that, help you do those things now. We've got some things coming to help you do those. Uh, enhancing your applications. This is what we call bringing the cloud to your application. Uh, and basically, it, it involves taking your existing Java enterprise application and enhancing it by calling Bluemix services. And, and there are straightforward ways to do that, and you can take advantage of all those different Bluemix services that are out there. Uh, and I'm going to talk about all these in a little more detail. And then optimize. This is, again, the one that we call lift and shift, right? So maybe you want to be able to take advantage of a cloud infrastructure. You want to be able to do rapid testing where you can uh, deploy and tear down environments, environments very quickly. Um, you want to take advantage of scalability. You want to be able to uh, you know, have cost savings or use some of the different payment models. That's all the things that you can do around the optimized entry point. So those are the three entry points that I'm going to be talking about. And this is my uh, Gorpy chart rendition of what I just talked about, OK? Right, create. And under create, besides create, there is the connect aspect that, that plays into the whole API economy um, uh, movement that's going on. And then there's reuse and refactor existing applications. Uh, optimize uh, is the uh, lift and shift, and then enhance your applications with uh, Bluemix services. OK. So create. Um, we've talked a little bit about cloud native applications, right? And this is being able to take advantage of the DevOps type tools that are available to you there. You have a choice of run times. Uh, typically, this is you know your Bluemix type environments. Uh, and we have. Uh, both web server application, server full profile, and Liberty profile uh, available in Bluemix for your use. Um, I was going to ask for a show of hands, but let me just mention briefly, in case you're not completely familiar with those two different application servers. When you buy the web server application server product, you get entitlement to two different application servers. We have the traditional web server application server full profile, and it is what's been around for over 15 years now. Um, and it's, you know, soup to nuts, Java EE compliant uh, application, uh, application server, sorry. And then you also have entitlement to the newer Liberty Profile. So Liberty Profile has very different qualities of service from uh, WAS Full Profile. Liber Liberty Profile has a, is composable, so you only put the parts into the, it that you need. It's got a very lightweight, very small footprint. 
Uh, it really is, suits itself well for running in the cloud because it's, you know, when you're deploying and you've got to start up something very quickly, because of that small footprint and it's also got a very fast startup time, it works really well uh, in the cloud. So those are the two application servers that we're talking about here. And they're, they're both available for use, uh, you know, in the cloud. <coughs> Um, the other aspect I want to talk about is the connect, connecting your uh, cloud native applications you might be creating to your existing enterprise applications. Um, this is again every, the whole thinking behind the API economy and, and being able to leverage all those assets that you've created for maybe new uses or uses that you know, weren't previously seen, uses either internally or externally. Um, and, 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 you know, the, typically the way that's done is through wet RESTful APIs with JSON payloads. That's uh, the predominant way to do that. And you can do that today with your uh, Java applications. You can use JAXRS or you can use uh, RESTful-enabled servlets. Um, you may be wondering about things like uh, documentation and publishing into API frameworks and things like Swagger. Uh, and for that kind of thing, I would just say, uh, keep your eyes open. Um, these are things that we're looking at, into in terms of making uh, your APIs fit into the, the frameworks that we're building for, for APIs. And then the third aspect of create is what I mentioned before, where you can actually uh, you know, reuse or refactor existing applications. And we have a lot of customers that, that want to do this, right? I mean, it's a, just a, a lot of work to take the existing applications that you have and, and uh, rewrite them as cloud-native applications. But you certainly can take aspects of them, uh, and maybe you've got parts of them that are you know, more suitable for a cloud-type environment for whatever reason. Uh, and then there's you know, communication mechanisms that you can use to drive uh, com you know, communication between those two parts. Uh, so we've got uh, you know, products that will help you do that that I'm going to show uh, near the end. So benefits for all these things, you know, I, I mentioned it before, faster time to market. Continuous delivery uh, is, is a big thing. Um, as I mentioned, we're taking advantage of continuous delivery ourselves with Liberty Profile. So every quarter we put out a new release. Uh, efficient dev DevOps uh, and a much simpler life cycle management process. And that when I, in the next slide, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that as well. Um, and all this is really to help you continue to get uh, value from your existing investments, even when you are creating some new, new uh, cloud-native applications. So uh, Jason McGee talked earlier, I saw him talk about microservices, so I'm really not going to talk a lot about that. Um, this chart, this picture, if you've read Martin Fowler's uh, online article about microservices, you'll recognize it from that. If you're not familiar with microservices, that's a great place to start. Um, Microservices are interesting. They're at Java one two weeks ago. I think it was that they were all the talk. But it really, it's still a uh, you know a, a technology or a, a programming paradigm that's still being developed. Um, but the basic idea is right breaking up your application into services uh, as opposed to you know the monolithic aspect. And WebSphere application itself, I would describe as a as a monolithic application. Uh, when I first joined WAS development, we were putting out a new release every two or three years. Um, and it really it was, you know, the product itself and, and the way we did our development on it and, you know, the, all the aspects around lifecycle management that really slowed us down. You know, really big builds. Um, every time you change something, you had to basically rebuild everything. Liberty Profile is not a... Uh, not a microservice, but certainly it has characteristics like microservices. I mentioned that it's composable, and you can pull into Liberty Profile only those features you're interested in. So if you're interested in EJBs or servlets or JAXRS or whatever, you pull them in, you don't have to pull in everything. With WASFO Profile, you install it, and you've got everything, right? Uh, with Liberty, you configure it to just have the features that you want and you can dynamically update that configuration. So it's, so it's pretty slick. Um, one of the interesting things about Liberty, because I mentioned it's lightweight and quick to start, is that 
it really works well as a platform for microservices, right? So you've got, you've developed these, these uh, microservices, they need to run somewhere, you can run them in Liberty Profile, which scales incredibly well. Jason was talking about, you know, you scale that up, and the questions were coming from the front before about, you know, operational procedures for that. Uh, and it's an interesting problem. We have this concept in Liberty called collectives, and a collective is just a, a managed group of Liberty servers. And we've been able to start a collective with 10,000 Liberty servers running in it. And <laughs> so the question becomes, how do you manage 10,000 Liberty servers running? Uh, and there's a couple different things that we're, we're building into the product to be able to do that. One of them is analytics, okay? And uh, rather, than, rather than having the mindset where you're looking to see how it's, it's the application server is running, Instead, you've got this push model where you know, the analytics tell you if there are problems that come up. And we've got you know, health, a health management feature in Liberty Profile and notifications. Uh, so that's one aspect to uh, microservices in, in Liberty. Um, the, other, the other aspect is that WebSphere application server, the full profile, has a ton of knobs and buttons and settings and, and uh, you know, custom configurations. Liberty Profile has very little, uh, for example, number of threads. So Liberty has a very sophisticated thread management uh, functionality, whereas in, in WASP Profile, you, you set the number of threads you might want to have. So, so this is the difference that you have to have in your environment to be, able to, um, to be able to run something like microservices where you have thousands of, of uh, instances of your app server running. Okay. So that's, that's just my little uh, push on uh, microservices. I did want to put one, I, I mentioned I was ZOS and a mainframe guy. I did want to put one slide in around ZOS. Um, I mentioned RESTful APIs and JSON, uh, and you, know, you, can, you can make RESTful calls into your Java applications. ZOS Connect is a way to make RESTful calls to you know, your uh, Kicks backend services or your DB2 or IMS services. Uh, and it's getting really a lot of traction with customers. I don't know how many ZOS customers we have here, but um, it's, again, it's a way to, for these business assets, which are critically important to the, to the businesses that have them, a way for those business assets to play in the cloud, okay? So you can expose these things just like you would any other RESTful APIs, and you can make calls to them from your cloud applications. Uh, you can make calls from mobile applications, and it's a way to leverage that investment that you have. Um, I'd be happy to talk about this for hours afterwards if anybody is really interested. Uh, I did also want to say something about StrongLoop, too, because you probably are aware that IBM acquired StrongLoop a couple months ago. Uh, and this, again, plays where, very nicely into the API aspect that we're talking about and being able to connect to your existing assets through APIs. Well, there's kind of a, a horse race going on now between Java and JavaScript, right? The two most popular languages that are basically used for web-based applications. Uh, and so we've got... Uh, WebSphere application server, Liberty Profile, your Java enterprise application servers. And we also have, on top of our Node.js SDKs, we have the, uh, the StrongLoop product, which provides a very nice enterprise-ready environment to do the same kind of things you would do in WAS, um, but for your JavaScript Node.js applications. Uh, and it's, it's a really popular uh, framework for creating APIs. So I just wanted to mention that because it fits into the whole story, really. Okay. So that was Create, right? So Create is cloud native applications connecting to existing assets through APIs, refactoring, and uh, reusing existing applications. Enhance is taking advantage of Bluemix services through your existing. Uh, Java applications, and you certainly can do that, right? I mean, there's hundreds of, uh, currently hundreds of Bluemix services available for your use, uh, Watson Analytics, uh, maybe you've got uh, 
an existing application, you want to be able to take advantage of uh, you know, speech-to-text services. You want to be able to do lang language translation. Um, or you've got an existing application and you want to be able to take advantage of log analytics. I, I mean, all kinds of services that are available for ways that you to think about uh, enhancing your existing job applications. And when we talk with customers, this is probably the, the entry point of the cloud that I think a lot of them give the least thought to. But once you start thinking about it, uh, it's interesting the different ideas that can come up, um, ways to be able to uh, not just uh, leverage these things, but you know, give yourself a competitive advantage for applications you might already have. Uh, and this all, again, fits in with the, uh, you know, the Liberty Bluemix services was, was on Bluemix that we, that we offer. Uh, one of the interesting aspects of this, of course, is that the Bluemix services are pay-as-you-go. So uh, the nice thing about it is you know, you're just paying for that amount of it that you're using um, of, the, of the cloud services. Oops, wrong button. Okay. Um, again, this is this is really just another chart restating the same aspect of it. Um, uh, that you know the, those those services that we're talking about really just uh, an extension to the cloud hosted by Bluemix. It's available uh, for your applications to use. And I know you've seen lots of slides and pictures about this. Um, the website that I mentioned earlier that has the WebSphere cloud strategy certainly has a link to the, uh, to the Bluemix catalog. And this is just an example of some of the Watson services that are available. Um, yeah, I'm not, it's more just to see the, the numbers available than, than uh, actually see what they are. In this case, um, data analytics. And again, lots of different categories of, of Bluemix services that are available for use by your existing Java applications. OK. And then optimize. So this is, again, what I mentioned before as lift and shift. So you've got an existing environment uh, with your Java enterprise applications running. You've got a huge investment in those applications. You've got uh, all kinds of admin scripts and configuration scripts. Um, and you want to be able to take advantage of all that, but you want to be able to run it on a cloud-type environment. Um, and you know you do this for a number of reasons. You know if you want to convert from a capex versus uh, opex operating expense operating expense type budget, uh, where you can you know pay monthly or, or hourly. Uh, there's also bring your own license pricing options that are available. You know if you've already got existing WebSphere application server uh, perpetual licenses, uh, and you know some of the reasons to do this. Uh, TCO reduction, right? So take advantage of the cloud platform and um, you know, the management of that and, and the way that it can be managed in such a way so that you're taking most efficient use of those, the resources that it's running on. That translates to a TCO reduction to you. Uh, there's also a risk reduction in terms of you know, the skills to be able to administer that environment if it's being administered for you. Um, so the two main problem statements when it comes to, to optimize and lift and shift, right? If you, want an application, if you want application portability and the ability to build services and plug them into the cloud, okay, the key here are things around you know, portability and, and being able to have that lightweight container aspect. Uh, we've got uh, Liberty Images uh, that run in, in Docker, okay? Uh, the other, the other uh, problem statement here, I want to bring an existing application, uh, but you don't want to do any configuration changes. And like I said, use those existing scripts. Uh, IBM application server and cloud is the environment that, that will do that for you. And it runs on Bluemix, or it can also run on SoftLayer. Uh, and really provides the best environment for taking your existing applications, moving them into the cloud. Okay, so this is kind of my summary chart here. Um, I talked about create and the three aspects beneath it. Uh, I talked about enhance, enhancing applications with Bluemix, Bluemix services. And I talked about optimize, the lifted shift. Um, and then in terms of the product offerings that I saw, that I showed you on one of the first uh, slides, uh, you know, this is kind of where they fit into these different uh, columns of, of the entry points. 
Uh, WebSphere on cloud is, is really the IBM application server on cloud product that we have. Uh, Bluemix, again, includes Liberty and Waz running on Bluemix. Uh, I mentioned Strong Loop. API management, obviously, is uh, the IBM product that we have for, for uh, publishing and building catalogs of APIs. I didn't really talk much about that, but um, you know, when you've got all your APIs you know, created and documented, you know, how do you make them visible and accessible and usable uh, to the consumers of those APIs? API management's a great way to do that. Uh, and migration tools is an area uh, that we have products that will help you with do things like refactoring and reusing your existing applications. Uh, enhance, right, WebSphere and Cloud and Bluemix. Bluemix is where your, those Bluemix services are going to be running. Uh, and you can use WebSphere and Cloud to run your, your existing applications to call those Bluemix services. And then optimize, uh, again, the main choices there are between Docker containers and you know, running Liberty or Web, WebSphere application server on cloud. Okay, so I mentioned that this was all part of our WebSphere Cloud strategy. This is the uh, website where this has all been published, and you can uh, hear uh, you know, client stories about how it's being used. You can get links to more information on the different aspects of it. So ibm.com slash WebSphere on Cloud. Um, and again, learning more about Strongloop. Got 30-day no-charge free trials for IBM WebSphere and Bluemix. Uh, the, other, the other website that I want to point out, I've been talking a bit about uh, Liberty Profile. There's a website, wasdev.net. Uh, so if, you, if you're if you not familiar with Liberty and you haven't tried it, there are you know free downloads for development use. There are actually also Liberty offerings uh, where you can run it in production up to uh, two gig of storage. So if you've got an app server or a number of app servers that aren't using more than two gig of Java heap, you can run them at no cost uh, you know, for production use as well. Uh, so I encourage you to go out to wasdev.net and download Liberty Profile and try that out if you haven't already. OK? That's it. Thank you very much.